Hey guys, it's MC Fix It here. We are back with another disc die. We're gonna be using an essence and uh, giving it a cool hotbed and lotion die. Uh, one of my favorite shows growing up was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I do know that uh, Leonardo was not the one that said Calabunga, but if you wanna change things up and you wanna make it purple or, uh, or orange uh, for Michelangelo, go for it, uh, but I just like the word, and uh, I really liked Leonardo growing up. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. I'm going to go through all the tools, all the supplies, everything you need to know. So this is a little bit longer than just jumping right in because I do have the tools and the supplies listed. Uh, but I think that helps you in case you ever want to do something like this yourself. You have the know-how on how to do it now. So let's go ahead and jump in. I like to use a white disc. They work the best for doing any kind of dyes that are trying to take uh, some different colors and things like that. Also a little bit more of the premium plastic. Uh, this is a Neo. If it was a Geo, it probably would not take it as well. Plus they don't make that in white by Discmania, at least yet. Um, you're gonna want whatever stencil you want. And then I cut it on a Cricut because it's just so much faster than taping it down and taking a knife to it, but that is totally acceptable. It does the pretty much the same thing. You just gotta be careful on your cuts. Uh, transfer paper is super important, comes in a really big long roll. And I did a couple of things to this. I folded it in half twice, drew a line down each side, put a disc on it and drew that in a circle. I did that all with a Sharpie. This is just a little bit of a centering tool for me. Uh, it's something I created a 3D print of, and then obviously that's just a piece of plywood with some lines drawn on it. But it just helps you line everything up as well as you can, because centering is important. It is easy to get off. I use lots of gloves because we're going to be using some different chemicals and dyes can ruin uh, you, the look of your hands. Uh, we have water and Dawn dish soap. And then back here, I have a little bit of a uh, butane tor or propane torch. My butane torch has not come in yet. It's been delayed. So uh, that still works pretty much the same. You can use a grill lighter too. Uh, we just use that to kind of heat up some of the lotion uh, just to give it a little bit darker appearance. Burner, uh, this is just a standard electric burner, really cheap um, on Amazon. Acetone helps get rid of the original stamp. And if you have any mix ups, uh, this is lotion. This is pro Kim and dye. I use a quarter of a teaspoon. So a quarter of a teaspoon. Pro Kim and Dye, and that's just cheap lotion. This is our three or four ounce little container. Um, it works really well. You wanna make sure they're nice and shook up. We're not using a ton of dye of that because it's just gonna be some of the other colors. Uh, black is our primary thing we're gonna be doing with a hotbed. So this is eye dye poly. You take the little packet that's in here, cut it in half, pour it in here um, with warm water and mix it up. There's no acetone in anything of my dyes today. I know some people do that. It does not work well with stencils, so avoid that. This is just a little funnel to pour the black back in. And then I have this old pan I have used so many times, and actually I haven't even cleaned it out since the last time I used black. Uh, I do that a lot because you just have a lot of dye that stays in here. And as soon as you heat it up, it comes loose. Um, a scraper tool, a pick. Picks are really important to be able to weed. Um, they make weeding tools too, but for some reason I can't find mine for the Cricut. Uh, pair of scissors, uh, then a heat gun. Uh, this is one, this is two. I only put it on one, and so that's all the tools and the supplies. Let's go ahead and jump on in and get this thing started. So I like to set up my work area, the things I don't need right away, I do kind of put away or push back just to give myself the best work area possible. So go ahead and get on some gloves. Oh, and I don't think I mentioned paper towels. Those are super crucial or some good quality rags, old white t-shirts, things like that work really well. We will be going through a number of paper towels today because of how we're doing our dye. So go and take your acetone cap off. You don't need a ton of acetone, but just go back and forth, get that original stamp off. I will say one thing, I love Discmania Disc, and I really like the Neoplastic, but these are produced by uh, Latitude 64, and there are some times that it seems like they press the stamp in a little too hard when they're doing it, and so you really have to get everything seated properly, and sometimes you can still see some of the original uh, 
the stamp even after you've done this, which a lot of, whoa, throwing stuff at me today. I don't need black dye today, thank you though. We're gonna be using a uh, hotbed dye for black. Don't know why that just popped off and came down. And sometimes you pick up colors from your table if you've used it many times. Also, if you're doing this in your kitchen, please put down a big, huge rag, something, beach towel, I don't know, something, you don't wanna ruin that. I do use a little bit of Dawn dish soap and water real quick. A Couple of swirls on that. Just helps get everything clean and acetone is corrosive, so it eats through everything. Next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and start our weeding process. Uh, for the hotbed dye we're gonna do first, we're going to pick everything that we want to be black. So anything you don't want to be black, you don't pick. I am gonna push down just a little bit. So there's a couple of things you can do at this point. Um, if you have a super clear disc, you can put it down and over it. Um, sometimes you want to use a measuring device of some sort. Uh, I'm just gonna grab this clear disc. I think I've said like every single time I'm going to uh, go ahead and do this disc, but I haven't yet. So uh, this will be a future video here. I'm just trying to get it lined up. So one thing you'll have to remember um, that the the bandana thing he wears around his head, I don't even know what it's called, um, is typically going to be kind of off to the side. So you're kind of worried about more the rest of it lined up. I think that looks good right there. Maybe down just a little more. And then I'm just drawing a circle around it. This will just help get me lined up nice. Uh, the Enigma and the Essence are really pretty much the exact same diameter, which is helpful. So I'm thinking that's looking really good. Um, we'll go ahead and get out that transfer paper. And with this, the goal of it, and I'm going to kind of scoot it off to the side a little bit so my head can be straight over top of it. Because uh, you really do want to focus on getting this very well lined up. I think that looks pretty good. You want to get not necessarily the air bubbles out, but you will want some of them. But the main thing is, is you are scraping it to adhere the transfer paper to the Oracle 5160 vinyl. And so that's pretty close. Actually, I'm gonna leave that back down here for another second. We're gonna go ahead and peel off the back side. And hopefully we don't have to do too much. Sometimes I flip it over, it just kind of depends. You're pulling out at about a 45 degree angle. The wording on this is the part I'm probably most worried about coming off perfect. The rest of it should just kind of naturally do that. And then I'm just going to make sure that's flipped up upright. And then you can go ahead and dispose of that. So you, for me, this is why I like this is you have kind of a little bit of a guide and reference. Um, and I normally put kind of my index finger right there, get that all lined up, and then get the top and the bottom as lined up as possible. And then I try to put the center in first, and then work my way down the disc. trying to get um, as many of the initial air bubbles out as possible. So we're done with that part. I'll go ahead and flip my disc over. 
and go ahead and put it on just like so all the way around it and one of the other kind of beautiful things is this helps uh, any kind of possible bubbles or spills or anything else on the back side of your disc and on that rim in particular because sometimes I actually cut this part off a little bit I don't know if I will on this one it depends if I have enough grip on it so go ahead and flip this over now we will spend a few seconds making sure all of this is properly seated and then we're going to spend a lot of time getting all the beautiful little air bubbles out so you pull this back at about a 45 degree angle beautiful B-E-A beautiful and you can spend some intentional time kind of getting this nice wrap around it this part does not matter as much so I'm just kind of putting it against myself and going pretty quick the main thing we want is the air bubbles out that are next to the actual design that is the most important uh, but you know what I'm gonna go ahead and do we'll go ahead and get this thing started get it warm so when we use the uh, eye dye poly on this actually I want a little bit more because this has a little bit of a pop top to it we are just putting this on here and just turning it on to about two two and a half we do not want it to boil, we just want it to get nice and warm. So now we're gonna work on getting all the air bubbles out. If you look over here, it is just starting to smoke just a little bit, that is all we want. We are not looking for it to go crazy smoke. You can see it starting to smoke. That is all we need it to do. I like how that looks. So I hold it and I put it down like this. So hopefully any air bubbles that are in there, actually one other thing I like to do is go ahead and turn on your propane or butane torch. Seems silly, but that actually helps pop any additional air bubbles on the top. Um, again, you're putting it down at an angle. Do not touch the pan. It is very hot. And you're just letting it float. Again, that plastic on the rim really helps because that's not going to do anything. It's just going to sit there. I'm going to let that sit for 10 minutes. I'll be back. It'll just be a few seconds from now for you. Okay, so this has been 10 minutes now. I am gonna go ahead and grab my little rag here out. Scoot this over quickly. And then we will go ahead and pick it up and let that thing drain a little bit, saving as much of that black dye as possible for future disc dyes. And we'll go ahead and wipe it real quick, see if we like how that looks. And I think I do. So I like to go ahead and spray it real quick. Go ahead and set this back up here. We're pretty much done with that now. And I just do a quick cleaning, making sure to get the back edge as well to stop any of that from continuing on. But uh, I think that looked really, really solid. I like it. So now the choice is kind of up to you which part you want to do next. I am going to wipe my hands off so hopefully any part that's going to be white here in a few seconds before we put the dye down on it will uh, work well. So I'm going to pull out here and uh, I think I'm going to go for the blue next because the blue is darker than the green. And so we're gonna go ahead and peel up all of this that should be blue. All 
how I do the lotion is sometimes it takes forever. Um, if it's a really hot day, it goes much quicker. Um, it is still pretty early in the morning and so it will take a while. So this is flag blue. Um, and so this is probably a little brighter blue than what I want it to really truly be. Um, in fact, I'm gonna see if I have a different blue real quick. So the only other blue that I have is pretty much the same blue. So we're just gonna go for it. I didn't think about that till right now. I probably should have got more of a baby blue cause that's more what it is than this dark blue. So this is really kind of an easy process. You just kind of fill up the area with dye. Now we're gonna to have to be careful when we have the green next to it, but right now you can kind of make this nice and thick. And so sometimes I have to leave this outside for even up to two hours, um, which makes this process a lot longer than just a basic hotbed dye. And when you have multiple colors, that means you're leaving it even longer because you have to multiply that. So just like that was not very difficult to do. Oh, I accidentally still had that on. Make sure you turn that off. And I just hit a little bit of heat onto it. Not much, just a little. That does help make it pop a little bit more. So we're gonna go ahead and let this thing sit outside for about an hour. Uh, I'll probably test it at an hour. I just wipe a little bit. If I don't like what it looks like, you just add a little bit more. I don't know if I'll show that in the video because I just normally do it where it's sitting outside. So let's go ahead and start cleaning this up. First thing I do is just kind of grab a rag or a paper towel and just kind of scrape as much off as possible with just one. And then uh, I just go ahead, spray a little Dawn dish soap and water. And uh, man, that turned out perfect. So that was one hour of sit time. If it was much longer than that, that probably would have turned out a lot darker. Um, but I like how that turned out. Also washing it off kind of does help the uh, dye to stop um, dyeing the disc as well. So we're gonna go ahead and peel off the last layer for the green. So right here and right here. And I will say you want to be careful where uh, the potential of overlap is. Uh, but besides that, we're just gonna use this meadow green and uh, go ahead and do the same thing. We'll probably leave it out for an hour as well. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and add that green. So this is uh, meadow green. And uh, we do wanna be careful not to put it on where the blue is at. So go ahead and be careful with it. The green really won't get too, or the black won't get too affected by it, but you definitely don't want it on the blue. And go ahead and do it. So one hour later, we'll be back. So we are back. We're gonna go ahead and check to see how it looks. And just sliding it off. Oh, I love it. Now this was not outside very long because it did get dark and there's a chance of rain. So I was not able to keep it outside as long as I was planning on it. Uh, but I really like how this one's turning out. And you use a lot of paper towels so sometimes you do run out and so Gonna go ahead and clean it off nice and good. But uh, I like that it's not super, super bright and dark. And then we'll just go ahead and hit it up with some soapy water to stop anything from continuing. And I think it's gonna pop well when we weed the rest of it. So let's go ahead and start uh, that final weeding process. Okay. 
because it does look like it did have a little bit of stuff on the side there but yeah that's awesome bringing back some childhood memories right here and i might have to take it to the sink to get there does seem like there's just a little bit of residue from that vinyl on this part right there but uh not bad at all i am really really happy with how that one turned out Sometimes you get some better ones than others, but uh, that is pretty awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. If this was helpful, please like, subscribe, comment. Let me know uh, if you like it and uh, if you'd throw it. It is an essence, uh, so pretty understable, but uh, a great thrower for a turnover shot. Thank you guys so much for watching. If this was helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Thank you again. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and add that green. So this is uh, meadow green. And uh, we do wanna be careful not to put it on where the blue is at. So go ahead and be careful with it. The green really won't get too, or the black won't get too affected by it, but you definitely don't want it on the blue. So we're gonna be really careful as we get close. Oh, and if you do go over like I just did there, I'll show you what I do in a minute. It is very easy to do that by accident, but again, you don't want to if you can avoid it. That's a pretty thin area, so. So there's a couple of things you can do. You can use toothpicks, you can use a uh, cotton swab if you have one. I think I do have a cotton swab right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of push this back and then do it again and just remove any of that that is really close to it. And uh, then you can also, if you need to, just kind of push that back down in there Gonna wipe off this edge because I did get really close over here too. And we just wanna be extra careful that we don't get that changing into the wrong color. And then I'm gonna go ahead and kind of turn it like that so I can get to the top. And when I originally did this, I did cut these pretty wide um, the tips on this so you can see some of my older videos that did get pretty wide on there um, So that's not necessarily what you want for this, but I already had these bottles These were from an old tie-dye kit I had And so that's why I'm not exactly certain the exact ounce, but I believe it's between three and four ounces But it came in one of those kind of big kits So this is a little bit more precision than what we've done before. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just lightly cook it. Just like so, that's it. Like I said, very lightly. And then just double check to make sure everything is exactly how you want it before you go ahead and just stick it outside. We're gonna do another hour on this and hopefully that is good. I did have to work today. Uh, so it has been pretty much all day and it's starting to become a little bit more like dusk now. So I'm guessing an hour is gonna be just what we need.
to get this. I don't want this to be super, super dark green. Let's go ahead and leave that and go ahead and do it. So one hour later, we'll be back.